What is playboating? Isn't all kayaking playboating? And why should you give any of your time for play? Despite your best intentions, you will inadvertently find yourself in situations on the river where you will need skills that playboating exemplifies. These are primarily surfing, using features to move across the river, and spatial awareness which in turn affects your aptitude for rolling. Playboating can take a low stress, low consequence environment and bump it up a notch. One of my favorite things to tell students at any stage of kayaking is, create adversity in a controlled environment before you experience adversity in a less controlled situation. Play is the best way to do that. I mean, what better way than to make a total fool out of yourself just when you thought you were getting things sorted with your paddling? So that begs the question, how do I get started? Do I need to have a play boat? How do I make sure I am in the best possible boat for my desired outcomes? Those are all good questions, and you can get a different answer from every person you ask. Just know that playboating means just that. You're playing and experimenting with the current, and this can be done with any boat you own. However, if you wish to start exploring the subcurrent, then finding something a bit lower volume is going to be best suited for those needs. Let's take a look at some different types of playboats and what they are best suited for. The first and most common kind of playboat is going to be the dedicated freestyle machine that is best suited for the current trend in freestyle moves in competition. These boats are going to be short, compact in volume, and with pretty aggressive lines and edges. They are also more sensitive to fit, weight, and body type. Just about all of these boats are going to have multiple sizes to fit the widest range of users. The next class of playboat is what we call a river running freestyle boat. These boats are fantastic at mastering the fundamentals of river play and freestyle moves and will have a wider range of fit due to their longer length. They too will have multiple sizes, and in some cases only one or two sizes. Finally, I like to pay reverence to the playboats of freestyle past. They were often twitchy, ergonomically incorrect, and totally focused on the play moves of yesteryears. Although these boats sound less than desirable, they were extremely advanced for what they were trying to accomplish. There was also no mistake that you were doing a trick, as many rival the length of modern creek boats. So that's the generic explanation. Now let's get specific and talk physics. The primary physical characteristics of a boat design, from a designer standpoint, are volume and how it's distributed, the overall length of the boat, the width of the kayak, the rocker of the kayak or the curve from bow to stern, and the shape and edge, which is generally attributed to the angles of the volume. Physical characteristics will affect performance characteristics. The most complex performance characteristics deal with the boat's speed and looseness, which deal specifically with rocker, length, and width of the hull. A kayak's hull speed is the boat's top speed when being paddled when it displaces water, such as when you paddle a boat through flat water or downstream, and even on some waves. The boat's planing speed is the speed at which the boat starts to plane out and its ability to accelerate while planing, which most often happens when a boat planes out as it accelerates downward on a wave due to gravity. Carving speed is the boat's ability to accelerate in a carving turn or its ability to scrub speed on a wave. And finally, the last haul performance attribute is the boat's ability to break free or its looseness for spinning. For the sake of simplicity, what you need to know about kayak design is that the shorter and more rocker, the more maneuverable but a slower a kayak becomes. The longer and less rocker, the faster but less maneuverable it is. Width will affect how the boat displaces water. The total surface area of the hull of the kayak relative to the water, plus how low your weight sinks that surface area into the water has a direct effect on how easy a boat is to surf and spin. 
This is a large factor on weight ranges for freestyle kayaks. Okay, so here's the tricky part. The shorter boats will reach planing speed much faster than longer boats will, but that doesn't necessarily make them faster, as planing speed relates to the boat's ability to plane and is much different than hull speed. However, this does have an effect on the boat's performance and agility on a wave, including its ability to break free into a spin or release for a blunt. Other physical characteristics are going to be more focused on a boat's hull performance and river running ability. These will include the boat's overall deck volume and displacement, although previous characteristics will have an effect as well. What you will tend to notice, however, is that volume in the playboat is centered around the paddler for both stability and explosive pop for aerial tricks, while the ends of the kayak are going to be squashed down for ease of initiation. Key things to look for here in a kayak are balance and volume from end to end, stability and smooth transition of deck lines, and obviously enough room in the kayak to fit you comfortably. A note on stability. Freestyle kayaking is essentially capitalizing on the instability of a boat. I liken it to an acrobatic airplane, very twitchy and highly agile. There's a fine line though between capitalizing on instability and being totally out of control. Um, okay, some things you, you definitely want to look for in a boat. Um, you want to look for a boat that, um, that fits you in a displacement perspective. So you want, you want a boat that displaces your weight correctly. Um, most, uh, most manufacturers are going to publish this weight range. Um, if, you can, if you can be uh, somewhere in the middle of that weight range, that's optimal. That means the boat's going to float, float you at the correct height, which means that your your um, your tricks and uh, your downriver moves are going to be um, easier to initiate. Um, you, you definitely want the seat to be set up um, not too far forward and not too far back. Um, so once you once you've got that narrowed in, uh, the next thing you're looking at is how do I get my knees positioned to allow to allow me to have the right foot room. Um, and so you can do that by um, working with our thigh braces. You can um, obviously move them back and forth. You can also drop the outside, uh, uh, the, the outside wing in order to um, allow yourself a little bit more room. You can pad out the, uh, the knee well area um, and all of those adjustments will help you get your knees either higher up or further out depending on your specific uh, size requirements and then you can start to focus on your feet and that's really um, where you get into some customization of the foot foam. Foot foam truly is an art and a worthwhile investment of time. This will typically be the final piece of outfitting you will tweak as you fine tune your fit once you find your seat position and thigh hook placement. Be sure to wear the footwear you intend to use while shaping and sizing your foot foam. You know, there's a, a thought process where people think that the further forward they can get in a play boat, the better they're going to be in their, in their tricks. Um, but you have to consider what that does to the stern and what that does to um, finishing those tricks. So um, <clears throat> you, if you can keep a play boat in its medium, sort of medium range, um, in theory, the boat was designed to be balanced. The trim of your kayak or the, the balance from front to back is super crucial when it comes to the performance of a kayak. If uh, you actually start to trim the boat backwards a bit, what's going to actually happen is you're going to create a lot of instability in the stern and also additional drag in the kayak, which will really slow it down on features. If uh, if you trim it too far forward, you may gain some stability, but what you're gonna actually cause the boat to do is purl into the water. Most uh, playboats are designed to be balanced right in the center of the kayak. So what you want is a nice trim boat, meaning the bow and the stern are equidistant from the water. 
getting your feet to fit means that you need your knees to fit correctly. You need um, the seat position to be neutral in the boat. So yeah, it, it's all completely tied together. Um, and uh, just maximizing the knee room, foot room without penalizing the play boater with, with larger shapes that become less uh, useful in a play feature.